What's up, guys? Rob D, F Willing Point LLC on Twitter, and Rob D on YouTube. Uh, I haven't made a Digibyte video in a couple weeks. We had the summit last week, and it's been a little hectic with, with uh, catching back up with work and stuff. So, um, the last video I made was right around here. We were at 99, 100 sats or so. Uh, I was saying it was looking a bit toppy just because, uh, you know, we were kind of lacking some volume coming in. Um, I wasn't really loving the way it started to look. We had we had a bullish fan out on our emos. The emos looked good, but I was still a bit concerned about them holding support. You know, especially after falling back down below the 8 and kind of struggling to stay above it. Uh, right here looked a bit toppy. And we had a, we had the cross down here on the MACD. So uh, we talked about 90 sats being a strong support level. Not strong, but that was our, our primary uh, support level. You guys can see that we kind of uh, messed around with it a little bit right in here. Um, we tried to get back back up above those emas. We were getting rejected pretty hard at the 55 and the 34. And as the 8 came back down, we got rejected by that. So we kind of got forced back down to the downside for the double bottom. And, uh, you know, we talked about 75 sats. Hitting that again, we missed it by 2 sats. Uh, we could potentially go down a little bit further just based on a weekly setup uh, that, that kind of resembles the last the last market cycle. But we'll have to see about that. Um, we're definitely getting higher lows on our MACD, which is, which is a good solid sign. But we're definitely looking, uh, you know, kind of flat from here. If you look at the weekly, uh, we're, we're definitely in this area here. Let me turn off these emas so you guys can see better. So uh, right here, we kind of bottomed, had a little punch up. Same thing right there, had that. And now we could potentially see some further downside. Now, if this, this bottom here doesn't hold around 68 sats, which was uh, some wicking action back here in, you know, December 17. And then we retested it back, uh, you know, back in September a couple months ago. So if that area doesn't hold around 68, 69 sats, um, we can see an area for, you know... That might hold because there is a lot of action in that area. You know, you guys can see it. There's a ton of action in there. Um, so right in this area here, there's a lot going on. So pretty much between 72. You know, this this area that we hit. So we hit we hit 69 sats here, 67 sats actually, and we can go anywhere from there, probably down to about 50, which would be the pretty much the base for this. Um, and then that'll give us that that final low like what we got right here right in there so we could land that we could land about 50 sats um i don't think that's gonna happen you know i like this area especially the way bitcoin's starting to look now um that's definitely looking stronger now let's look at Bitcoin. the last video we also talked about 73 to 7400 being the bottom so i was saying i think we we're about 8100 in the last video somewhere around there and i was saying how bitcoin looked looked a little bearish um, and how I was thinking that we could probably get down to 73, 7400, and we got down to, what was our low here? Our low was 7296, so we pretty much hit that. Uh, we bounced really hard from there a couple days later, and, uh, you know, I was looking for 9k to hold, so we have to see if 9k holds. You know, it looks pretty decent there, probably some, some accumulation before heading back up. Uh, this is going to take a little bit to chew through, and then maybe we could test higher, back up into the 10ks. But, as far as sat level goes with Digibyte, BTC... Um, depend, you know, depends. If uh, if Digibyte shows some weakness now against BTC, you know, we could get that lower low on the weekly, and that's going to take uh, you know a couple months to play out. So this was definitely a you know very long term pattern. But anything under 100 sats is what I was aiming for. I got in in the 80s and a little bit in the low 90s, so I'm comfortable with my risk tolerance here. Even though we're down in the 70s, you know, I'm down about 20% or so, somewhere around there. Not not terrible, 15, 20%. If we go down to 50, I'm just going to dollar cost average in and then bring my sat average down to you know the 60s or 70s. So that's going to be I'm, I'm okay with that risk tolerance. It's all based on your personal preference. None of this is financial advice. Don't take uh, anything I say on this video as, um, you know, as financial advice. So you have to invest in what you are comfortable with and don't invest more than you can afford to lose. So the weekly definitely looks similar. We're definitely in this area here now. Uh, whether we kind of go flat in here and kind of just hover around this, this bottom at 68, 69 sats, or if we do make that lower low, we have to say. So if we come, come down here, you know, maybe hit 50 or somewhere in the 50s, and then bounce hard after that. Just like here, as soon as as soon as it bounced, you know, three, four weeks later, and then all of a sudden it just went parabolic. So I think that same same setup is gonna happen. And then like I said on the last video, watch out for that first move that Digibyte makes. Because anytime it goes parabolic, it ends up uh, you know far exceeding Bitcoin's move. So the first move here was your top. And then the next cycle, your first move was the top. It makes that second high. It makes that second uh, you know upwards move, you know, once things settle down. But that first one is really what you want to look for. And then if you are making those swaps to BTC, that's the one you're going to want to do it on. Um, but, you know, once, once we start getting up there, we'll go over it more. But this is definitely an area where I'm accumu accumulating. Because, once again, my risk tolerance is, uh, you know, I'm fine with this. You know, it's certainly better than buying in five, four, four five, six hundred sats range. You're, if you're buying anything under 100 sats, you know, next year you'll probably laugh at these entries. 
So this is not financial advice, guys. Um, I see people on Twitter all the time crying about how people are saying, you know, Litecoin's going to $1,000, and then you got somebody crying and saying how, um, you know, they're giving people bad advice and, you know, they're idiots and all this other nonsense. Remember, guys, it is your money. Your money. Your money. Y-O-U-R, meaning yourself. One person's ideas, one person's decision-making. This is not somebody else's money. This is not somebody else's decision. It is not their job to hold your hands through any of this. You earn your money. You make the decisions to do what you want with it. If you want to pay somebody to give you financial advice, and if they give you bad financial advice, that's on you too. Because you paid somebody to give you financial advice, you're supposed to do your own research, make sure they have a good background in it. If not, again, you have nobody to blame but yourself. Nobody can force you to do anything. I'm tired of hearing these, these bullshit arguments on Twitter about, you know, people People are crying because they probably bought, they bought up here because the news media and all this other shit telling people how, not, I'm not saying for Digibyte, I'm saying for anything. Bitcoin, Litecoin, XRP, Digibyte, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you bought the top, you got nobody to blame but yourself. So, I'm getting tired of seeing it on Twitter. But I am accumulating under 100 sats. I am accumulating with my money. I'm not telling you guys to do it. I'm not telling anybody to do it. But this is what I am doing with my money. All right? This is not financial advice, again, and for the last time. So, uh, you know, I could definitely see Digibyte flat here for a few more weeks at least until, uh, you know, Bitcoin really shows that it's in a, uh, you know, in a bullish advancement move type of move. Um, I personally think we're in a bull market because, I mean, you have, you have bull markets and you have bear markets. There's really no in between. So, uh, I know, you know, people are waiting on confirmation for bull markets and stuff like that. I personally believe the bull market was down here. You know, once you make a bottom and you flip it, I would personally say that you're in a bull market, but uh, this is kind of just a sideways sideways move before further advancement. But I mean, it doesn't have to go parabolic for it to be a you know, bull market. But um, yeah, I think we're there now. Well, I think we've been there, but we kind of just have to wait. And I think a lot of money is waiting to see exactly what Bitcoin's going to do around this range, this like 9 to 12K range, which has been kind of played around with for a while. So I think once, uh, you know, once we get through that and then there's some real evidence of, you know, no further downside, then you'll start seeing some money moving to alts. Um, you know, like again, this rising wedge that I, that I showed you guys last video, um, we had a nice advance on the dominance, you know, a couple weeks ago, but it's all, it's starting to look like it's coming back down now. So, you know, we had a bearish fan, we broke through that, we started crossing EMAs again, and now we broke down below that again, and we're starting to get the bearish fan again. So let me throw up, uh, let's see how some of the indicators look, let's see if we can find any clues here. Uh, like uh, let's see. MACD, yeah, the MACD is definitely looking like it's going to touch for sure. Whether it bounces or not, we'll have to see. Uh, the last time we had a cross in October, we had a bounce in the end of October, and that's where we got these two days of, uh, you know, it's very strong moves by Bitcoin. So now it's going to test it again, it looks like. Whether it bounces again or not, who knows? Uh, this 68, 69% range has been played with for a while. So if that doesn't hold, you know, it'll, it'll force it back down, force some money into alts. You know, we're kind of playing like a game of limbo here in, in these later months in the, in the year. So we have to see how that plays out. And uh, other than that, yeah, it looks good. Honestly, there's there's definitely a flat range of Digibyte now, even in the US dollar pairing. Uh, this might even form like, well, actually not really, because Digibyte just goes nuts once it once it actually breaks out. It doesn't really stick to any kind of patterns, like as far as like cup and handle and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, looks very similar. Definitely looks similar. And uh, hopefully it plays out the same, because Digibyte could hit a really, really nice moonshot, and uh, we could see ourselves... Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean, if we got a crazy parabolic move like that, you know, you're talking 38,000%. Say, say you even pull that from down here. You're talking a dollar, you know? So, we have to see how it plays out. The weekly MACD, let me look at that real quick. Yeah, so that's that's pretty much flat. Uh, no, actually, let me look at the BTC pairing. Uh... We're entering that flat accumulation time with the G-Boy. Yeah, see how we had that flat area in the uh, fiat pairing? You know, we had, uh, so from January, so about two, two months, two and a half months, where it kind of just went flat. We're having that same, same scenario play out now. Uh, let's take a look at it. So I, I hate these defaults. The colors. I mean, you put purple and orange together, and it's super thin lines. How the hell are you supposed to see that? 
Yeah, definitely looks similar. Also, like how how I talk about divergences and stuff, you can see it very very easily here. You get a top, you get a lower high. Uh, no, not that one. This one here. So you get a higher high on your price, and then a lower high on your RSI. So there's your bearish divergence there. That kind of signals it. That's not going to be your only signal for the top, but that's a strong indicator you're at the top. That would have been an excellent, excellent area because once you get back up, once you got that secondary chance to start laddering back out at around seven cents, you know that's a really good, really good area to start. Start exiting. Let's see, guys. Let's see if we can. Uh, you know, I always thought that you might could probably get to a dollar one day. Who knows if it's going to happen on the next run? I'm kind of targeting like, like twenty five cents would be real nice. It's not a huge jump from the last, the top, the you know the last top. It's only like a two x. But who knows? Maybe it gets to a dollar or beyond. We have to kind of see. We gotta wait, but it's definitely getting close, I think. And uh, there's not much, not much longer we have to wait. So hopefully you guys uh, got some good information. Hopefully I wasn't, you know, talking nonstop. But this is what I see. And uh, one more time for good measures. This is not financial advice, please. So stop relying on other people for financial advice. All right, guys. So I'm accumulating here. Um, if you want to do so with your own money, you can do so as well. If you don't, then that was your choice. All right. So. I'll catch you guys later. I'll keep you updated. It's probably going to be flat, though. And I'll, I'll see how it goes throughout this week. If it's like, uh, if we get some nice moves and stuff, I'll go, you know, I'll, I'll go live or something or make another video. If it's flat, nobody really wants to see flat, boring videos. So uh, I just wanted to give you guys an update based on price, what, you know, what exactly happened, why we dumped. Um, we kind of knew that if, you know, we, we definitely touched 90 again. We touched 90. We broke 90. Broke down from 90. And we had a target of 75. Uh, we hit that. We're pretty much we're right there now. So um, that's, that's what I'm seeing. I just wanted to give you guys an update. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Peace.